Okay, so this is the second tutorial for LTSpice. In this, uh, in this uh, tutorial, I will show you how to perform AC analysis. So uh, in particular, I want to extract the frequency response of a linear time invariant circuit, uh, which in this case will be a simple uh, filter. So I'm going now to uh, draw um, a new uh, page here for uh, at spice i assume i'm assume that uh, you already saw the tutorial one so i'm not going to repeat again uh, all the steps to draw a circuit if you did not follow that video just please follow that uh, because i will go quite fast here i spent one hour there almost for explaining most of the control uh, that you need for performing uh to draw the, the the circuit so please look about that video if you did not okay so then in this case i want to draw uh, a circuit uh in this case i can maybe uh, set uh, draw a low pass filter just to make it simple uh, so i take the resistance here ctrl r right click uh, place it here capacitance and um I place here voltage source, I place the ground here, ground here, and then I'm going to uh, connect the different components. I'm going also to create a label for my, uh, yeah, for my output voltage. And uh, here this is, will be still, uh, will be still one kilo ohm. And this way is one microfarad. So I'm going to perform a short calculation of the cutoff frequency of this filter. Again, my purpose is to extract the frequency response. So I'm opening now the calculator just to verify precisely what will be the cutoff frequency. Uh, so is one divided by 6.28 divided by one millisecond, which is tau. So the cutoff frequency of this filter will be uh, approximately 159 hertz. And uh, so I'm expecting to see there the cutoff frequency. Uh, this is a low pass filter, of course, and I'm going to set this circuit for performing an AC analysis. So I right click here, advanced. And then here there are many options that you can, uh, uh, you can uh, set. However, we want the AC analysis, so I have to just be careful about this part here. And uh, here I click one, and here I click zero. Okay, here a brief explanation why we need one and zero. Uh, the reason is because LT spice can only plot voltage and current. It cannot plot you the frequency response of a circuit, okay, which is the ratio between the output voltage and the input voltage. Uh, it cannot do that, so, but it can only plot voltage and current. However, if you remember the definition, for example, of a frequency response is equal to output divided by the input. If the input is set to be one, then the frequency response will be equal to V output because V output divided by V input, if V input is equal one, then V out divided by one is V out. So in, the, in that case, we can plot V out which practically will be equal to the frequency response of the system, okay? And uh, so this is how to set the circuit here and I'm going to simulate uh, run, for example. Of course, I did not set anything and LTSpice open for me this option uh, for setting the simulation. I go here, AC analysis. Here I choose decade. I will show you what does it mean soon. Here I choose number of points uh, 100, for example start frequency one hertz and stop frequency. Well, this depends on how I want, how is the range that I want for the frequency uh, to be plotted. So in this case, I know that the cutoff frequency is 159. So I can stop my analysis maybe 100,000 uh, at one frequency, which is 1000 times larger than the cutoff frequency, for example, 159 kilos. So I write now here, 159K. So let's write, 100k just for uh, being there. Okay, so I click uh, OK and I also place this uh, label here. It can be placed also in other place. If you click here on the little hand move, you click there, 
see now there is the hand. So I click here, left click. You can see I can move it wherever I want. So maybe I can put it here and then right click. So anyway, I already run the simulation and here is the plot on the top, but as you know, I like it more in the left, then this circuit has to be enlarged, so click here. And uh, I want to see uh, the frequency response, as I told you, is just equal to the output voltage because I use the amplitude equal one. As you can see, if I click here, then uh, measure the output voltage, which again is equal to the frequency response, I get this plot. And this is a plot that we already know. I already show in class that is the frequency response of a low pass filter. Uh, so you should be already familiar with it. The, the, but you can see there are two curves. Again, remember that the frequency response is uh, divided into part, one uh, related to the phase and the other related to the magnitude of the frequency response. We, we knew about that. We usually discuss only about the magnitude, which is this one black line while the dashed line represent the phase, uh, the phase shift introduced by the frequency, by the filter or by the system. Usually we neglect this kind of like uh, uh, phase shift uh, of the frequency, phase uh, uh, shift introduced by the uh, system. Um, but again, uh, we, we need to know that exists and we are going to try to understand what this mean, okay? So um, here, Again, the, the continuous line is the magnitude of the frequency response and the dashed dot line is the uh, phase. Okay, so practically you perform the, you, this one is the frequency response of your filter. Uh, we already know about it. Uh, again, as I say in class, this line continues to minus infinity. Uh, okay, because we are in dB, you can see the left axis, Y axis is the axis for the magnitude and the right Y axis is for the phase. Okay, and here in the bottom there is. Uh, the frequency uh, axis. One thing that you have to notice is that, as you can see, the y axis, the x axis is not linearly divided. So the, the interval between the different ticks in this uh, bottom axis here in the x axis is not equally separated uh, between the different ticks. You can see here the distance is larger, here becomes smaller, smaller, smaller. This is because the x-axis usually is plot, uh, it's not omega or f, but is logarithm uh, in base 10 of omega or f. This is because usually when you plot a frequency, uh, a frequency response or a plotting frequency, as you can see, you are covering uh, numbers very different. I explain better. You can see in this x-axis, I have quantity like one earth and also I have quantity equal to 100 kilohertz, which are five order different, okay? One, two, three, four, five, five order of difference. And uh, so in order to make these two different values in the same plot, I need kind of to compress the scale. I need to compress the axis, okay? And this one is done uh, by using the logarithm. Uh, for the x-axis. So logarithm of omega here or logarithm of f, okay, for the x-axis. Um, of course, although this one is in uh, in the logarithmic scale, uh, I can, I usually put one hertz, log, uh, 10 hertz, 100 hertz, one kilohertz. So I don't have to write here logarithm of one hertz, logarithm of 10 hertz, logarithm of 100 hertz and so on. We, we usually write one, one, 10, uh, 100. But we will go here again back uh, in the lecture when I will explain the body plot in our lecture. So in the end, it's not uh, so much critical for you, but this explain one other things that uh, I maybe did not talk too much at the very beginning when we set the AC, which is the following. Why did not, why I did not set zero errors as the very beginning of the plot, because that would not be possible. Because as I said, the x-axis of the plot is in logarithm. So if I, if I set here in the option zero, uh, then what the LT spice should build is uh, an x-axis, which start from logarithm of zero, which is minus infinity, which cannot be plot, of course, right? So this is why I'm not allowed to plot, uh, to select zero at the start frequency. If I do that, you can see that uh, LT spice tell me that the star frequency must be positive again, because 
I'm not allowed to, to write zero. Neither negative value, of course, because negative frequency, they do not exist, but this is very important. Now, what does it mean decade and uh, here 100 points? Well, as I told you, a decade is, um, uh, when we say a decade, it means uh, something that is related to 10 times, right? So uh, here you can see the, the x-axis is divided in decades. So one hertz, then here is 10 times 10 hertz. This is 100 hertz, so it's another decade and so on. So we have uh, different decade divided in decades. So in, in multiple of uh, 10, okay? So the frequency is divided multiple of 10. Now, this, uh, this number here, it tell you how many points of the plot will be between two decades. So for example, between this 100 hertz here and this one kilohertz. So in this part of the curve here, for example, you have that the curve is made of 100 points, okay? This is what is the meaning of this 100 here. So you have 100 points between two decades. So in this case, for example, between 100 and one kilohertz, the distance is one decade because one kilohertz is 10 times 100. Or you can also think that in this part of the curve between one kilohertz and 10 kilohertz, there is a decade, which means uh, uh, 10 kilohertz is 10 times so one kilohertz. And uh, and so between these two points, there will be 100 point. Okay, here in this line, there are 100 point. The more point you have, the more precise, of course, is your uh, plot. The less point you have, uh, the less precise it is. But again, the more point you have, the more time it need to calculate. We saw before in the previous tutorial. The stop frequency again is pretty clear. Is where the the x-axis stops. So this is uh, how to how to uh, set the DDC. You can also choose octave or linear, uh, it's up to you. Again, uh, linear, it just means that, uh, you see here there is now a number of points. So it means that between one hertz, so the start frequency and the 100 kilohertz, you will have only 100 point. So probably will be much more approximated. We can run it and see what happened. Uh, okay, I cannot put zero, of course, I can put one. Okay, and then I run it. I'm expecting something more approximated. Let's see, you can see it become quite ugly. Uh, this of course is not the correct plot because there are some error here. Uh, but again, the error is due to the fact that I, I took too much, a few points. So in all of this plot now, in all of this curve, there are only 100 points, which are not probably sufficient for the algorithm in LTSpice to calculate properly the curve. Okay, so this, this is important. So as I told you before, the less number of points, the less precise will be the curve and sometimes become too much less precise that is practically wrong, okay? So be always aware about that. So here, of course, I like to choose the decade because uh, if I use linear, then here I have to put a very big number to make this one kind of like a nicely plot. But if I use decade, then I can use here a small number and I don't have to think about too much. Uh, so here, okay, so I change it in decade and then here I simulate again. And here I get the correct point plot. This is a plot that is correct. Why? Because again, this is a low pass filter. So I'm expecting that a low frequency, I have zero dB as we see in, so in class. And also at high frequency, it decay like this, uh, the, the magnitude of the, of the frequency response. Um, another things that we did not discuss in class is the phase. Uh, you can see that uh, the phase shift introduced by the, uh, by the filter is practically zero, as you can see here, zero at very low frequency, and then at very high frequency, it introduces a phase shift of minus 90 degree. What does it mean? It means that uh, the output voltage will be 90, uh, minus 90 degree uh, phase shifted in respect to the input, okay? Uh, so, uh, yeah, this means that uh, the, the output is practically delay of, uh, the, remember that the phase shift is always related to delay, the time delay. <clears throat> and uh, and uh, if you want to convert this uh, phase shift in time, you have to multiply for, uh, for the, um, you have to, you have to, you have to do some little calculation, of course. 
which means that you have to calculate, uh, you have to divide the, the phase for omega, okay, 2 pi f. Uh, and then you get the time phase shift. In this case, 90 degree or minus 90 is pretty trivial because this is half of, uh, half of 180 degree and uh, 180 degree means uh, practically an inversion of the sign. So this is practically the delay is, uh, so 180 degree, 180 degree is, is uh, half of a period, right? Because one period is 360 degree. So 90 degree is one quarter of a period. So the delay of my signal, if the input, uh, the delay of the output signal in respect to the input will be approximately one fourth of the period of the signal, of the input signal. Uh, so this means that if the if the input signal has a frequency of uh, one kilohertz, the period of the signal has one is one millisecond, and the and the output uh, and if the frequency is for example sorry, if the frequency of the input signal is one hundred kilohertz, okay, so we are in this region, uh, then the period is ten microsecond, and we say that for a signal. Uh, of 100 kilohertz, we have a delay of minus t divided by four. So it means that uh, um, 10 microsecond divided by four is 2.5 microsecond, right? So the output signal will be delay of 2.5 microsecond in respect to the input signal. Anyway, this is just detail that I want to just mention. So, you know, we talk also about practical stuff here. Uh, if you want to see, because you remember that the uh, low pass filter this is in dB, right? But you may want to see the linear version. As you know, there is the dB and the linear version we discussed in class. Uh, you can right click in the Y axis and you can transform the Y axis in linear. So we click here, for example, and then we click here. As you can see, the black line now, the continuous line is now then dropping to zero. You see now zero appear here. Uh, and this is something also we, we already expected. Uh, the linear version always drops to zero while the dB version is going to minus infinity. So this is pretty straightforward. Now, again, uh, what I'm expecting from you is that you are able to export this uh, plot in LTSpice. So right click, uh, file, export. Then in this case, I just want the frequency response, which is equal just the V out. I'm going then to save it. And uh, I save it, of course, uh, let me see. Uh, let me create a new folder I write here, AC analysis. And then I save it there and I call it maybe draft two. I don't know, it's not very important for me. You can call it AC analysis. Uh, it does not, uh, it, I don't think it's very important unless in the text I specify it uh, differently. Uh, so here I click save and then here I click okay and then it was saved. Okay, now I will show you what is the appearance of the file that you saved. So let me, uh, let me see the, So if I if I remember correctly now, um, uh, yeah, okay. So if uh, here you can see now the file that um, uh, that was saved and exported from LTSpice, and there is the frequency, which is this the first column, this one here that I'm going through with the mouse, and then we have. Uh, uh, the output parameters. Again, here the format is a little complicated because we have both magnitude and phase. So at, at for example, at this frequency here, which is one earth, we have the first parameter, which is the magnitude. And then we have the second parameter, which is the phase. And also for the other frequency, we have magnitude here and phase. And here we have some parentheses, we have some comma, we have this symbol for the degree, we have the dB. So it is not, so simple as it was before to, to export the data in MATLAB because we have all of these characters here which are not numerical values and MATLAB has to practically remove all of this uh, all of this part here in order to read correctly the data. So I already wrote a script that you have to download from Canvas uh, which will automatically remove all of these parentheses and then also DB and all of these things. 
uh, which will help you just to uh, export the data very fast. So let's go to have a look about now the script. Okay, so I'm in MATLAB again, and uh, as you can see, I have my file draft two that I exported from LTSpice, and I also have here the um, the file in MATLAB script that I downloaded from Canvas. It's called LTSpice Export Frequency Response to MATLAB. Uh, I double click here, and then it should open the code that you cannot see now. Uh, let me just uh, share again my screen. So you can see that. Uh, yes, so you should be able to see it now. And uh, it's a little more complicated because as I said before, you have to, so all of this part of the code here is uh, practically trying to remove all of this uh, character like DB, like the, the parentheses and so on, which are not numerical, which are mixed inside of the data. So this is the purpose of this. You know, this is already for the font, this is for resetting the, the MATLAB. And then you already know the other part probably. Uh, we have the Y, Y axis, uh, and then also we extract the data from TXT file, we put in data, and then we extract the frequency, magnitude, and phase. Uh, yeah, you, you probably are able now to understand more or less what happened here. Uh, the point is that here at the very beginning, you have to put the name of the, of the file that you save in, uh, in uh, that you export from LTSpice. So this is the only, probably the only thing that you have to change. So here I'm going to write draft uh, two because that was the name of my file. And let me go through to double check that everything is correct. So I think this one is the only things that you have to change. Um, then I click run and the, it appear then the plot. Um, I need to uh, share with you the plot. So I stop my screen and then I go to plot, just share the plot. Uh, so I hope that you can see now the, the plot view. As you can see, we have one single plot where, where the uh, two curves are overlapped. Uh, you see, this is well, nicely, nicely done. And in the x-axis, we have the frequency, and then y-axis in the left y-axis, we have the magnitude, and in the right y-axis, we have the phase. So again, I hope, try to look about the code and maybe also at home and try to understand what's going on. Uh, I do not have so much time to look into it. I can go back uh, to the plot just to uh, comment a little, a few code, but I won't go in detail. But here again, once you've done this plot, you have to save it. So click on file, uh, save, and then you can save it uh, with uh, in PNG, in PDF or whatever. So yeah, and then you put the, the plot in, in the answer of your Word file. Okay, so this one we close it and I'm going to comment a few things in the, in the code. Uh, here again, uh, the only thing that maybe is more different in respect to the previous case, the previous uh, script that I show you is this control here. So usually we use plot to uh, plot the curve and then we have the x-axis and y-axis, but here I use semi-log x. Remember that in our case, the x-axis has to be logarithmic. And one plot uh, that has the axis logarithmic and the other one instead uh, uh, is not logarithmic, that is called semi-logarithmic plot, okay? This is why it's called this, uh, this, uh, this uh, command is called semi-log x. Uh, so we ju want just that the x-axis is transformed in uh, uh, logarithmic scale. Uh, yes, because yeah, because the frequency values that we get from the file they are in hertz. Okay, uh, as you can so I, as you saw before, the plot that I plot before has also dB in the y-axis, which means also there I have logarithm, but I do not have to explicitly calculate the logarithm. Uh, the data that I extract, they are read in DB, okay? Instead, for the x-axis, I get the frequency and I have to transform it in logarithm because again, I want the logarithm scale in the x-axis. This is why I have to use semi-log x. 
again, this is something that we will, I will talk more in detail when I will talk about the body plot and Laplace transform. So at the moment, take it as granted uh, in some way. Okay, so this is all. The last two line of code is just to transform the x, uh, the, the y axis in uh, in black, so to color them black. So it's very more professional. Okay, so now I'm going back to the altispice, and uh, I don't think there is much actually to explain here. I don't have anything else to say. Of course, you can also. Uh, plot here the frequency response in terms of current. So if you want to plot, for example, I out divided by V in, which is the frequency response in respect to the, uh, of, the of the output current or, or in other words of the uh, current in the capacitance in respect to the input voltage, you can just click here. So this one is the frequency response of the, of the current through the capacitance. Um, yeah, but again, usually we work in voltage, usually our example in class and so on, they are everything in voltage. So just plot the voltage, uh, the output voltage. Okay, so for this uh, tutorial is, uh, is done. So then answer to the question that are in the lab text. <laughs>